Welcome to Conline Critic, the show that gets facts wrong about your favorite conline. I'm Jan Meesley, and in this episode, we'll be looking at the language of nobles, poetry, and dragons, High Valyrian. This is the first episode in the fourth season of Conline Critic, my series about analyzing the design of different constructed languages. I don't know if you already knew that, and it's kind of weird not knowing if you knew that. This show used to be, like, my main thing. I think it still says it's the main focus of the channel in my channel description. But, like, measurably, that is no longer the main thing people are subscribed to my channel for. That said, hi everyone! One, Conlang Critic is back. I know none of you watched the video announcing what would be coming in Season 4, but yeah, I'm doing a video about High Valyrian, and you're watching it now. High Valyrian is a fictional language created by David J. Peterson for the HBO series Game of Thrones, a series that you definitely already know about. This is the second Game of Thrones language I've discussed on this show, and as such, the background details of how High Valyrian was created are familiar territory. Much like Dothraki, an early version of High Valyrian appeared in George R. R. Martin's book series A Song of Ice and Fire, in the form of some character names and a few fragments of text, with the language first appearing in the second book in the series, published in 1998. And also like Dothraki, when HBO adapted the series into Game of Thrones, DJP was brought on to expand High Valyrian into a full language, first appearing in the show's third season, which aired in 2013. Today, High Valyrian is one of the very few relatively well-known conlangs, thanks to its association with and prominent role in Game of Thrones. In 2019, a course for High Valyrian was launched for the popular language learning app Duolingo, and at the time of writing, it's one of only two constructed languages on the app the other being Esperanto. Though there is one for Klingon that's been in the works for a good few years now. In fiction, High Valyrian is the ancestor of the Valyrian languages, a family of languages spoken throughout the continent of Essos. High Valyrian specifically is used as a literary language. It's essentially Game of Thrones version of the fantasy Latin concept. The main source I used for this video is the Language Invention Wiki, which is a disparagingly good resource for information about DJP's languages. High Valyrian is super well documented on there. High Valyrian's consonants are m, n, Nya, ba, da, ga, ga, ba, da, ga, sa, ha, va, za, ja, ra, la, ya, tra, ra. Hey, is this segment actually useful? It's been a part of this show for so long, I've never really thought to question it. But like, do people get something out of hearing me read through all the consonant phonemes that they wouldn't have gotten from just showing the chart? I don't know, let me know what you think. It's a new season, perfect time to start shaking up the format. Anyway, right, I skipped some stuff here for the sake of the chart looking nice, but there's a bunch of allophony and marginal phonemes and stuff. See, like that. There's a dental fricative th and a velar fricative h that both only appear in loan words, and that palatal phoneme there is usually pronounced like j, but has other allophones that appear to be in free variation. Gonna be honest here, I don't really know what there is to say about this inventory. This is a pretty standard standard fantasy language consonant inventory. There's what, the uvular stop, the voiceless trill, the consonants that are kind of between being frictives and approximants? I guess those things are kind of interesting, and I don't really have anything bad to say about anything here, it's just that it feels like I've seen all of this before. Nothing here is all that new or exciting to me. And that's not really High Valyrian's fault, I don't think. Like, there's nothing wrong with this consonant inventory. I've just been doing this show for almost five years, and I think I'm running out of interesting things to say about consonant inventories like this. Is this burnout? Is this that famous YouTuber burnout everyone talks about? I like making stuff, my other projects I've finished recently were very fulfilling, and I definitely still like conlings, and I don't think I care that much about engagement. I mean, you've seen my channel, you know what sort of things I make on here, obviously I don't care about alienating my established audience. Sorry, I don't want to make this about myself. You're here for High Valyrian, right? I mean, so many people requested a video about this language, clearly that's what people want to see. So like, I gotta. I mean, I told everyone that I would in that video note if you watched. Okay, sorry. High Valyrian's vowels are these ones. Each of these six vowels, uh, yeah, just showing the chart on screen and not reading them. Yeah, I don't know, it feels weird. I don't really know if I like it, but I, I can't keep doing the same thing forever. Sorry. Each of these six vowels has phonemic length, so there's a long and short version of... Is this... Is this a review? I'm just describing things, I'm not even doing analysis. You could get all of this information from the wiki I cited at the start, it's linked in the description. Look, there's literally this exact chart. What useful commentary could I add here? Yep, this is a pretty normal six vowel system with phonemic length. You've seen this sort of thing before, I've seen it before, here it is again, but in a language everyone already knows about and likes. I could, like, add in more educational stuff, explaining everything specifically for people who don't already know stuff about conlings, make the video twice as long like I did with the Lingua de Planeta video, but that would risk feeling condescending to people who do already know all this stuff. I could try to go out of my way to find things to criticize, but, like, it's fine. None of this is bad. I don't think it's even accurate to call it boring. I think what the problem is 
is that it doesn't actually make sense to always start with a long section about phonology. Like, okay, for languages that are aiming for a specific goal, it makes sense. There's stuff from natural languages to compare them to. I can figure out how well they meet their goals. But for a fictional language like this, it's just, I'm just reading a wiki page. Here's a table of diphthongs, because on the wiki, that's what comes next. You actually get more information from the wiki's version of this chart than you get from mine, because I simplify charts like these to make them easier to read, so I can then read through those extra details here while this chart is on screen to give the illusion that I have something interesting to say about it. Like the monophthongs, these diphthongs can all either be long or short. The top row diphthongs are falling diphthongs, whereas the other ones are all rising diphthongs. Cool. Good use of a paragraph. There's also some info here about the way stress works, which I don't have anything to say about apart from just relaying the information here and saying, this is well thought out. In universe, High Valyrian is a literary language. A bookish tongue, if you will. In the books, it's described as having a writing system. This writing system was never created. In the show, it just uses the Latin alphabet. I mean, I get it. The written form of the language doesn't exactly feature prominently in the show, not nearly as much as the spoken form, and it would be a lot of work for something that doesn't really matter to the show, at least not from the showrunner's perspective. But you know, it still would have been nice if one had been made. There's this quote from DJP about his idea of what the writing system might have been like, and his idea is that it would have been like a hybrid alphabet logography inspired by the way Egyptian hieroglyphs worked. And like, that's a cool idea. It would have been cool to have seen that. So as it stands, what we have is a romanization system that romanizes a native writing system that that we know next to nothing about. Just like Dothraki, this romanized form of the language is what came first, and DJP reverse engineered the rest of the language from it. And like, yep, it's definitely a functional romanization system. Everything is what it makes sense for it to be, I don't think there's anything it would make sense to change. It doesn't make sense for this to be the way it's written in universe, but it also doesn't make sense for everyone to be speaking English all the time. It's fine. Cool, there you go, officially out of things to say about the orthography. What's the point of this even being its own section? This format is so limiting. It's weird, right? Because I definitely haven't lost interest in conlings. I actually have been enjoying reading through this wiki about this language. It's well put together. A lot of care was put into it. DJP is good at what he does. It's just like, what can I add to this? Why is this a video that people want me to make? I don't have any formal linguistics education. I haven't made a real conlang before. I haven't even watched Game of Thrones. Like, seriously, what am I doing? Why am I making this video? Why did I decide to commit to making a video about whatever language the most people asked for? Nothing else I do is like that. The thing people like about my channel is how I just make videos about whatever topic I care about. Why did so many of you think this would be a good video? I'm sorry, I'm doing it again. Please, don't worry about me, I'm fine. I'm only putting all my meta thoughts about this show in here because I generally don't have enough to say about High Valyrian to fill a whole video. And like, if you saw the thing I posted everywhere while I was writing this, you already know what the conclusion to this line of reasoning ended up being. Oh, also, just in general, you shouldn't assume that you know who I am or how I'm feeling from watching my videos. That's a pretty unhealthy way to consume media. Anyway, right, grammar. High Valyrian is a very inflectional language. A clear example of this is the way noun declension works. Nouns in High Valyrian have eight cases and four numbers, and the way the two features are declined depends on which of six declension groups a noun belongs to. At an abstract level, this is somewhat similar to the way nouns work in the European classical languages that High Valyrian is supposed to be a fancy analog to. Now, I say six declension groups, but it's a bit more complicated than that. Like, the three example words shown here are all first declension nouns, but the different shapes of their lemma forms make the surface realizations of these suffixes different, and all of the other declension types have similar amounts of variation. There is a lot of stuff you have to keep track of for noun declensions, which I think is fitting for a language that's supposed to be kinda like Latin. The four-way number distinction adds to the familiar singular and plural numbers a pocal, used for when there's some or a few of a thing, and collective, used when talking about all of something. The set of cases here is, I think, well selected. I like the use of the comminative and instrumental which correspond to with, as in alongside, and with, as in using. I think the most interesting feature of High Valyrian grammar is its grammatical gender system. When most people think about grammatical gender, they're thinking about how it works in most Indo-European and Afro-Asiatic languages that have grammatical gender, where some nouns are feminine and others are masculine, and sometimes there might be some nouns that are neuter. However, grammatical gender doesn't have to have anything to do with gender gender, as I talked about in my video about lingua de planeta, and the way gender works in High Valyrian is a great example of that. High Valyrian has four genders, lunar, solar, terrestrial, and aquatic. This is a very fun set of categories. It's not quite as complex as how gender works in, say, the Bantu languages, but it's also a bit more complex than the more standard animate-inanimate or common-neuter gender systems. Adjectives are more regular than nouns, and they agree with nouns in case, number, and gender. Adjectives usually go after nouns, but sometimes they go before nouns instead, and there's alternate forms of these suffixes used in that context. There's also another simpler set of suffixes used when the stem of the adjectives ends with one of a few specific consonants, which also have alternate forms for when the adjective goes before a noun. Okay, I'm back to just reading 
getting stuff from the wiki now. There's a whole bunch of charts like this on the wiki for everything. I'm not actually motivated at all to now go and rework any of like the verb conjugation tables into my normal chart style. I think you get it at this point. It's all very intricate and we're still only talking about morphology here. Verbs in High Valyrian are just really complicated in general, and explaining how they work would basically involve a whole lecture about tense, aspect, and mood. The amount of work put into it is very impressive, and I think the end result is pretty cool. I think what's most impressive is how all of this morphology came about from DJP reverse engineering the very small set of examples of the language in the original books. The books only contain two complete sentences in High Valyrian. There's a nice long quote from DJP on the entry for the word Valar on the wiki that explains his exact thought process turning this pair of sentences into the extensive morphology and grammar in the final language. Quote, I wanted to create something that was evocative of Latin or Greek in precisely the way that an American who hasn't studied them very much might imagine them. Even if if one doesn't know the word case or aspect, the thing one notices are the um, us, os, ion, ai, etc. endings. If you look at the various High Valyrian names from the books, it's clear that those endings are part of what struck Martin as well. I wanted to create a system that supported those endings. In the two canon sentences, we're dealing with the nominative, so the cases aren't going to show up, but it gave me the opportunity to instantiate a new paradigm. The fact that we had all men here screamed collective, but we also have a number of names that end with R, and that gave me an idea. The names would likely be singular, not collective, but what if there was a connection? If I wanted to make Valar the product of inflection, it would have a number system that would at least be singular, plural, and collective. This is how the number system of Valerian was born. This also, though, suggested a gender system, because if the singular of Valar was going to be Vala, it suggested a connection between whatever mass nouns give birth to Ryagar and the lot and their count versions, which would terminate in A. Add to that the many O-themed names, and I came up with a new cross-section, mass versus count, and theme A versus theme B, these latter being vocalic themes that are more or less arbitrary. Combining those, I came up with four genders. All in all, despite the fact that there were only two full sentences of High Valyrian containing a total of three words, I was able to get a lot of mileage out of them. Even if this may not have been what George R. R. Martin planned or envisioned, I think it works pretty well. Also, given how daunting it felt to learn Latin way back then, I felt pretty good about coming up with something that could sit next to Latin at the kids' table at Thanksgiving if all the seats at the main table were taken. Speaking of the way David J. Peterson reverse engineered the very small corpus of original text into a full language, the vocabulary of High Valyrian is where a lot of that stuff is most apparent. Outside of those two sentences, exactly two other High Valyrian words are given English translations in the books. Of these five words, two of them have less than subtle Latin influences. That word for dragonfire, dracaris, sounds a whole lot like the Latin word for dragon, draco, and the word for must die, morgulis, also happens to sound a lot like the Latin word for death. Morse. As DJP put it, this is, quote, either a one in a trillion coincidence or very lazy. Outside of George R.R.'s handful of words, the rest of the vocabulary was created by DJP. A lot of the charm present in Dothraki's vocabulary is also present here. DJP is good at this stuff. As I mentioned in the Dothraki episode, I like the way David sometimes uses vocabulary to pay homage to various people or things. It's always very fun. There's stuff like how the word for wise is named after Sylvia Sotomayor, the creator of the language Kaelin. The word for daughter is named after David's sister Natalie. The word for Crow is named after someone who won a contest after the release of the Art of Language Invention. The word for son is named after GJP's 3,000th follower on Twitter. The word for chain is named after Simon Belmont from Castlevania. The word for pear tree is named after Melvar from Futurama. The word for stuck is named after the Suez Canal, and so on and so on. There's a lot of this stuff, and it's all very fun. And like, it's done in a way where you don't really notice until it's been pointed out. Like, all of these words fit right in with the more straightforward ones. Other than that, I uh, legitimately don't know what else to say about the vocabulary. I could just list more things, I guess, but I don't really want to do that. Uh, there's this chart I found on the Game of Thrones wiki that shows a bunch of different kinship terms. I could probably get another couple of minutes of content out of that. I seriously run into this problem like every single time. I never know what to do with the vocabulary section. Maybe this shouldn't be its own section every time either. Now, okay, I know I said I probably wouldn't do the spoken sample like this again after the Dothraki episode, but like, you know, I feel like using an actual clip from the show still makes more sense than me reading through it myself. So, uh, the following sample is from Game of Thrones Season 3 Episode 4, and now his watch is ended. Released on April 20th, 21st, 2013. The scene features dialogue in both High Valyrian and the related language Astapori Valyrian. Let's take a listen. <laughs> all in all, I guess, I mean, I haven't really said anything meaningful about this language, have I? Like, should I now, after having described what the language literally is, vaguely say, yeah, I like it? I mean, that's what I usually do for a positive review of a fictional language. 
I mean, does this section even hold any value to begin with? What is Conlang Craig? I mean, what really is it? It's nominally a review series, but I don't think any of the episodes that I describe as good Conlang Critic videos actually count as reviews. What I think this show should be is one where I look at a Conlang and use it as a starting point to talk about different aspects of language design. And like, ideally, I should know which ones before I make the video. I think there are multiple fundamental aspects of this show that have made it actively worse as a series about Conlings. One of those is the framing of these videos as reviews. Like, they're not reviews. Not anymore, at least. The other aspect is the way I select what languages to cover based on how many people asked for them. Again, you might have already seen my statement about this, but I'm going to stop taking requests. I'll finish this season, do the rest of the episodes in the small list that I already announced, but after that, what languages I discuss on this show will be entirely decided by me. The response to this decision has been very understanding, and I'm grateful for that. This show definitely isn't going anywhere, but after this season is over, it's going to be more in line with the rest of what I make, where new episodes only come out when there's a topic I actually want to discuss. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, where I'll be reviewing Bliss Symbolics. Black Gil. Black Gil. Black Gil. I'm a bit excited. I'm a bit excited. I'm a bit, I'm a bit excited because Black Gil has so many vowels with so many vowels. There's so many, so many vowels. Looks like we just want to kill. I'm a bit excited. I'm a bit excited. I'm a bit, I'm a bit excited. I'm a bit excited because this episode is a first in a few ways. Black Gill.